in the space of a couple of seconds. So even though he did have the resources, he was so low on Lara, he couldn't produce any units. Yep, yeah, so tough break for Mythology in the opening game, but very well played by Knights Gaming's Al. So now we will be moving our focus to Daybreak, and this time with a ZVP. Uh, the countdown will begin in just a second, and we'll be getting directly into this game. I'm already looking forward to it, naturally. I want to see Myth begin a comeback. Um, but great game so far, and hopefully a lot more to come. It's going to be a tough, tough game here. Oh, yeah, especially versus uh, the player you are about to see, guys. Uh, the map is going to be Daybreak, and uh, we do have... A ZVP this time. In the bottom, we do have Mythology's Daz, uh, the green Zerg player. And in the top, this is the player I was referring to. It is going to be Knights Gaming Chuck. This guy also made it to the individual league offline final, so he's going to be one of those top eight players competing for the first place alongside uh, Harst and Red Grubby and others. So he is very, very good and Daz is going to have his work cut out for him on this map. Yep, this is actually a bit of a tough matchup for uh, for Myth. Uh, a bit unfortunate here because of course we consider Daz one of our best players if not the best so to have to come up against Shark here who of course grandmaster level player incredibly good as you said already making it to the individual league offline finals as well. This is going to be a tough game for Daz. Um, now the question is what strategies are these two going to employ? When you're in a situation like this, especially with one game down, I could potentially see Daz doing something very all-in-ish. Uh, trying to catch mm. his opponent out, not letting it go to a macro game, and leveling up the series very, very quickly, and trying to swing the momentum back the other way. Oh yes, that would definitely be a good move uh, to do, but at the same time, you know, going up versus a player like Shaq, trying to go for an all-in, yes, it might catch him off guard, but also it might fail horribly so you know it's it's down to basically how big Daz's balls are <laughs> I'm gonna say it just like that Shaq going for a gateway expansion we have been seeing a lot of these lately coming out of the Protoss players and uh, Daz well so far there is the potential of the all-in still because he did open up with a uh, pool first and he's going to be taking his natural expansion right now of course Shaq not scouting at all he's just content to uh, expand off having that one gate you know if an all-in would be coming he can all all um, he, he can chrono boost out a Zod, build another pylon in his main base, cancel the expansion if he saw something fishy, but this being a fairly serious competition, he's practically not expecting that. Gas going down as well. So, so far everything is looking standard now. Daybreak, a fairly old map, has seen its uh, share of battles and uh, in basically most matchups it kind of ends up if the game if the game does go uh, for long enough, it does end up in a split split map situation, which you know currently in Heart of the Swarm favors the Zerg a little bit more. Would you say so? Um, I guess. Yeah. I guess I just see Protoss late game like Death Ball armies as so scary that uh, well, any time you get into that situation. Well, they are, but you know the problem is, especially on this map the middle is all narrow pathways in choke points so you know in the late game the zerg has the option to build tens and tens and tens of spores and spines in the center so any time you trade armies with him you can't capitalize on the advantage even if you do end up trading favorably because there will be so many spines and spores that will buy the zerg quite a lot of time to reinforce moreover if you go for uh, swarm hosts you're basically not losing uh, resources because locusts are free units, whereas you know the Protoss, he has to expend resources. He will lose a couple of units uh, fighting uh, that combined army. So that's why I'm saying it. But uh, of course, it doesn't have to be necessarily the case in uh, all scenarios. So far, we see that uh, the game is fairly normal. Third base uh, going down just now for Daz. Uh, he has taken his gas just for the link speed to be safe versus any kind of gateway pressures. And he's trying to harass the expansion a little bit. Oh, he actually does get in for a scout. This is this is crucial for him at this point in time. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. The most important thing there is, of course, there is no hidden tech for Daz, but what it's going to let him see is the timing of this second gas. He's going to see it's only building now, and he's going to be feeling, well, pretty safe. He sees, the, you know, he's seen the wall off at the front. He's seen, okay, you're only just now taking your second gas. My third's going up, still at a fairly normal time. Uh, I've got to say, he's going to be feeling okay. Obviously, he's going to have to deal with the Zealot and Mothership core pressure that a lot of uh, Protoss players nowadays are doing and can be very frustrating with Ooh. this third. This is actually a, actually quite a heavy pressure from uh, from Shaq. He's foregoing any kind of tech, uh, only recently taking the second gas, which means those gateways have been, uh, have been constructed ridiculously fast. He's going for a full out three gate pressure, building multiple proxy pylons. This hatch will have to be cancelled. No! No, Daz lets it finish, but he doesn't have the units to defend this three gateways worth of production. Uh, I mean, it's going to be too late. Those 20 links are not going to arrive at the scene of the crime in time. There goes the hatchery. And right now, Shaq, well, if he sees a lot of links he can't deal with because his plus one is not yet done, he could just recall. But for now, he's going to stay for as long as possible, trying to do as much damage as he can. Behind this, he's already getting a Stargate. Yep, I like that. Choosing to try and target the Queens down as well. Continue to do damage. Warping in more and more Zealots. Daz is losing both Queens in that attack. The Mothership core is still alive. This is looking horrendous for Daz, as now Shark can continue this pressure in. Uh, Daz was not happy that he lost the third base. Uh, Try to take out the army before it could retreat. Maybe not a wise decision. These Roaches would be a lot more effective if they had the support of two Queens and Speedlings as well. So now it's going to be even longer before Daz can remake that third, because he has to wait until he has enough army to effectively engage here. Yeah, I think with these roaches and the links, he is going to be able to push this back, but he has to engage smartly. Uh, the the links have to go for the stalkers and the pylon, but so far there's just too many zealots, and they deal with the links quite easily. Void ray production behind this four shack. Das is just trying desperately to get that spire up, but I don't think he's got enough time. He's going to run out of time just about now, and those mutalisks will never see the light of day coming out of those eggs. Absolutely. The Roaches and Speedlings unable so far to deal with the plus one Zealots. The Mothership Core just adding in constant damage. Another Queen falls. And Daz looks like he's on the very verge of losing here. He's doing everything he can to defend. But with only a couple of Roaches coming out at a time, no way for that Spore to finish. And of course, Void Rays on the way. I think we're about to see a 2-0 at this point for Night Gaming. I think so. Uh, I mean, Shark knows how much damage he's done. He's not even warping in more units. Uh, uh, well, as I said, as he warps in three stalkers, so he's only warping as many units as he has to to keep this push alive and going. But behind this, he's taken his additional gases. He's dumping all the rest of his resources into void rays, uh, restarted pro production, and before he gets to the third base, there's the GG from Daz. And as you said. Knights Gaming taking the quick 2-0 over Mythology.